peace out to everybody. Oh my gosh, this is the very first <laughs> um, Pep and Kaz, the real review of the real world homecoming, New York. Uh, and in a nutshell, if you are a reality TV show fan, if you know anything, if you like the Real Housewives, if you like American, maybe not American Idol, if you like the Real Housewives, if you like the, of any city. Drag race. You, drag race, pretty much, uh, because, the, because of the confessionals, right? Um, if you are a reality show, fan or if you can acknowledge that reality tv has become a thing then you have to pay homage to the original ogs to the show the real world the real world revolutionized reality television and television overall that's undisputable everybody indisputable everybody knows that however this show is specifically dedicated to the brand new series called real world homecoming where the original seven housemates get together in the same original loft that was the very first season of The Real World back in 1992. And when I say the first season, they didn't have anything before it to know, like to set an example. They All they thought was they were just doing some documentary. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But of course, I'm so excited that you're here, Caswell. Thank you so I'm much thrilled. for joining me. I told you immediately that I wanted to do Real World and you're like, yes, I'm in. And I I know that we have a bond over um, all things zombies, but I didn't realize, I didn't, I think it didn't occur to me that we have a bond over all things real world until I realized. We don't. We have I a- was just looking for something to do a show <laughs> with you with. And since, um, you know, you can't sit on me on Fridays, I'm jumping on your show now uh, for the real world. And I really didn't have, I didn't really know how much of an effect it had on me. I certainly didn't know I didn't. I, I don't even. Maybe I knew about the reunion get together, whatever this thirty years later thing is. But um, I was interested in it because I mean I did watch the first season and I did have to do and some recaps. And it's nineties. It's the nineties and it's New York in the nineties. So I was interested in that, you know, definitely. But yeah. uh, we're, we're creating well, that's, that's, a bond. We're creating a bond over this <laughs> because we didn't really key, key over the over the real world before. We never did. No, we never. And did. I stopped uh, watching uh, after what Hawaii. I was say was we. I think I stopped watching a little bit around that time as well. Probably Hawaii, Vegas, you know, like in that season, around those those seasons. But I mean, really, we bond over things that are, we just instinctually bond over things that are 90s. Okay. That's what it okay, is. Okay, well, j- and things that are just, just, just to bring it back, this is a reality TV show in which they had seven strangers get together in which there actually was no hot tub. So <laughs> I mean, for real, no hot tub and very little booze. Enough. And there was no hot tub. There also really wasn't, as far as we know, any sex between the roommates. Like we, you know. Yeah, I don't know if we really, ever. I, they hinted it. Yeah, I didn't think Julie was sleeping with Kevin. That's for sure. She, she sure, <laughs> sure wasn't. Um, and allegedly, she wasn't sleeping with Eric either. I know the people kind of hinted at that and I think we're going to find out more about that okay but the original seven people come back to real world homecoming it starts uh it started on the fourth um and so we watched it on the premiere day and it was fantastic and if you didn't get a chance to see I had the opportunity to interview the uh two of the original house guests who are on this season of course uh uh Norm and Heather B and that was amazing um so this this season's only going to be six episodes long, so this is going to be a very short-lived series. But we are going to be bringing you our thoughts on every single episode, every single week, right here. And um, we we can't really get into it until we start talking about season one, the original season. Mm-hmm. And so that's mostly what today's going to be about. Okay. Just our love of it. All so right. sit back and relax, because it's time for the real world. Mm. <laughs> Can somebody get the phone? Did somebody get the phone? I mean, that's that's not one of the best things. And um, uh, <laughs> we listen. I want to yeah. talk about okay. flight jackets. I want to talk about Doc Martens. I want to talk about Gap jeans. I want to talk about landline telephones. I want to talk. I want to talk about New York City rooftop confessionals. I want to talk about the limelight. I want to talk about champion sweatshirts, which I still. I want to talk about Michael Alec. Michael Alec in the 
at the limelight. They were at one of Michael Alex's parties mm. so mm -hmm. in the season. Mm -hmm. And I just watched it. And he's there with the assless, with booty hanging out. It's blurred. Mm -hmm. And it's there. And I also want to talk about using a, um, using pop music that was in rotation on MTV mm -hmm. as the soundtrack for the real world. Because I definitely remember that. Mm -hmm. But then going back in later on and switching out the music. Anybody who watches uh, reality TV knows now that they have this, like, they have music that nobody's ever heard. It's, like, specific to reality TV. We've all seen that clip that's going around on TikTok right now where, like, somebody says some news and it's like, dun, 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 dun. That's that typical thing. Well, back in the day in season one, they actually had real music. You would hear Prince songs. You would hear... Van Halen, like all, all of it. You heard uh, everybody. <laughs> 30 years Van ago Allen. is so long ago. Like, I can't, like. I, is it really long I ago? I don't know how, I don't know how this season is going to do. I don't know what the ratings are going to be. But I feel like, okay, 10 years ago, like if it was a difference between like a 10-year reunion, that'd be like, oh, okay. But 30 years, it's like. That means the people that, I mean, I guess there are a lot of people that watched it that might have been like 10 or something, you know, when they were just home watching. So maybe, you know, they're in their like 40 now, but it's, it's so long ago. Like, I, it's, and it's so strange to so watch them now. Let's take right. our viewers back to that right. because most of these people probably haven't even watched. No, most of them so aren't even swimming in their daddy's the ball sack when this came out. You you watched Real World for the first time. Why do you do you remember like that decision to watch it? I was I'm not I'm not trying to out anybody or but I was a young I was a te almost a teenager when it came out. It premiered in 1992 mm -hmm. and apparently they filmed it in like January or February. Started in February like of, of 1992 mm -hmm. I, and then it ended in the spring and then it came on in the summer. So like they they it started coming on while they were still in the house. Like, they were on TV while they were still in the house. Really? Right? Now, these days, like, a drag race, it happens a whole year later. Mm -hmm. But they they actually were watching it um, while they were still in the house. I think the finale was, they were filming the finale when it was premiering. Anyway, um, and so that was in 1992. I remember seeing commercials for this on the real world mm -hmm. on MTV mm -hmm. and saying, I got to check this out. And I think it's because I saw black and white people fighting in the commercial. Mm -hmm. And I saw... A, gay, a person that was cl clear, queerly gay. Um, and I'd never seen that before. Well, I, you know? I remember where I was when it happened. I had moved out of my family's house when I was like 16, 17. And there was a, I had a lot of friends that were moving to New York City at the time, and we still stayed in contact. And there was this one guy, his, coincidentally, his name was Norman, who was also gay. And he was saying, like, oh, wow. yeah, MTV's starting this thing in which they're just filming a bunch of different people living in a house together with no script, just kind of like documentary style. And my friend Norman had tried out for it and got pretty far, but obviously they chose another gay guy named Norman. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then when it came out, it's like, oh, this is the show my friend Norman was going to be. They, kept, they picked another gay guy named Norman. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I remember at the time that all, all, all of my friends uh, would, would go to New York at the time to go to the limelight and wait in line and get chosen to go in and mm -hmm. shit like that. I wasn't about that at that time. I was still trying to get my shit together. I think one of the things that I love about the show is that it is a time capsule of New York City in the 90s. Yeah. Like you said, the limelight. Uh, gay skate. Uh, you know, people who were here in New York Roxy. Uh, during the 90s know that the Roxy had gay skate on Wednesday nights. That's where they went. Um, you know, all of these different things. Uh, being down in the subway, seeing the tokens, because that's what you, how you used to get around is mm -hmm. in the subway, you put a token in the thing. Now when did that change? Metro cards, and now you can tap your phone. All of that You changed. can tap your phone now? You know, phone that's booths. Wild. Okay, I didn't know that. You can usually, you can tap your phone if you have like an Apple Pay or, okay. you know, Samsung Pay on your phone. Uh -huh. You can boop, boop. It has like this, like, yeah, it's the future. And so, yeah, so much of that changed. The, the biggest thing that changed, though, is the cabs were square. All the cars had square edges in New York. You like cars now are more smooth and aerodynamic and round looking on the yeah. edge. But back in, they were boxy back in the early 90s. And so the very first scene starts with Julie coming from her family in Alabama, who, you know, they're definitely very Alabamian. <laughs> and, and she's in this car uh, when she lands in New York on her way to meet the rest of her and she got on her gap khakis um, everything in that like 
kind of Arizona iced tea print coat mm-hmm. that's like, you know, New Mexico. I didn't mind that. Um, yeah, I don't mind it either. You know, it was, I mean, it was a style, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but it's just crazy to go back and watch all that, you know? Um, and so what do you think, like, what were the biggest, I watched the, the kind of the recap, I think I sent it to you, of the whole season. Mm-hmm. What do you, what are the biggest takeaways for the season? Because basically, why did you stop watching the real world compared to why you liked it in the, in the beginning? Everything that I really loved about the real world season one pretty much revolved around Heather B. And she always said, like, I loved when she like, <laughs> I just wanted to be her best friend. I felt like she was my best friend. Uh, I love that she says shit like, I already ate Chinese food, but I'm eating again. You know, I felt that. I felt that. I really <laughs> felt that. Uh, and also, like, a, something that I could relate to with this one was, yeah, I mean, it was it was a nice New York City loft, obviously. But it wasn't, like, a fancy-ass, like, how they have it, it now. Fancy. Like, it like a some place. bad girls club with, you yeah. know. Uh, gold, yeah, I was just gonna uh, say like gold or ornate, whatever, yeah. like <laughs> mirrors everywhere for the bitches to smash. Like it was just like it was kind of no, it was kind of trashy in a lot of ways. Because remember, like the elevator was stuck, or they were trying to get something. I mean, it just it was like New York. City. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was see nice to New York City is different in other places. Like where I lived in New York City on Avenue A and Ninth Street for seven years, that would be considered a homeless by like LA terms. <laughs> you know, like made out of popsicle <laughs> sticks, so they turn on the heat when it snows, like that kind of thing. But New York City is just yeah. a, a completely different. I mean, it's a, you know, obviously it was the first one, so they were just trying out. So they weren't trying to do anything fancy. They were just trying to find some place they could fit seven people in. Um, I think that. I th- to be fair, to be fair, wait, to be fair, your point about New York, LA, I would beg to differ. I'd say New York City in 1992 in that loft was probably a little bit more like what LA would have also been in 1992. Yeah, I'm not repping in LA like, in any way just because I live here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Making sure. <laughs> I'm not coming for New York. I'm just. I'm just saying. But um, uh, I think that things that really stuck out for me were, and I really hope that these things get smoothed over thirty years later. Is um, the fight with? Yes, there was a fight with Julie and Kevin, but with Becky and Kevin, Becky was really being a Becky. And and when she was talking about like the melting pot metaphor, and I was like. And I remember cringing at this when when this first came out. And I'm like, then? yeah, I remember, but like, ooh, like I just remember, but like, really? Like when she's like melting pot, I'm like, I like I couldn't articulate it the same way that I can articulate it now. And of course, there are more examples to pull from when when you want to have an argument with her about this type of stuff. However, at the same time, I also thought that Kevin was also being patronizing when he was like young lady and then he called her a stupid bitch so it kind of like they both kind of proved their point because she was trying to prove which a lot of white people and white women at, uh, are still trying to like victimize themselves as far as like you don't know what i go through like when, when she when they when i hear like white women talk to like black men and be like i'm in the same position as you you know you know and then they're like oh really when did you get pulled over by the cops so white women like you don't understand but and you don't understand the misogyny that we go through and like i you might not get the job because you're black i might not get the job because i'm a woman and and, and then but they both kind of proved their points because she was a perfect example of the ignorance that he deals with and her and that comes from her state of privilege and he also gave some really good examples of the shit she deals with when he when he was fed up with her, so he just called her a stupid bitch, you know, because that wasn't called for either, even though I could understand where his anger was coming from. In case, I know I probably should have recapped it a little bit first, but there were two, correct me if I'm wrong, there were two main fights about race, fights. I mean, there were other, other discussions with like Eric and Kevin on the front stairs and all that type. Um, yeah, Eric was also like wrapped up in a bunch of bullshit too. But uh, there was a fight between Becky and Kevin about race, and there was a fight with Julie and Kevin about race. So um, I don't right. So the the fight with with the, there were two there were some of the fights. The fight with Becky and Kevin was really more like an argument. The moment with Julie and Kevin really did seem like a fight, mm-hmm. and it it went to the point of there was a discussion about violence, a candlestick thrown. Somebody felt afraid for how their is there no one filming life, this? Or, you know. How say? is there no one filming this fight? Because it was just the aftermath of the fight. You oh, know. I thought you. Yeah, I don't. I, you know what? That's really. I think they. They. I don't know. Maybe there was a moment in time where people were not 
on film. Maybe they gave them like a break time every day. I don't really know. You're right. They they were being filmed. Because somebody was lying. So you can't lie about like a yeah. candlestick in your hand. Yeah. You know, either you did well, or you didn't. You can't is, misconstrue that. Also, it probably played up to, you know, if there was if there was video of it, then it wouldn't have been as interesting. And so they really need, in order for it to be like, you know, who who was it? Who's lying? They had to just not show it. It's more, it was probably more entertaining for them to show the argument about it afterwards than the actual argument that happened. Because it probably wasn't as much of a screaming match until later when they were outside on the steps. They were screaming and hollering and she was pushing him and he was up in her face. It, it looked well, like that's it a that's violent. a difference between and you're just passing by. That's a difference between current reality shows now and reality shows then when they just started because now when somebody lies and says, I never did that, the next scene is <laughs> the footage of them and doing the music that. Starts. Uh, and then you hear the rattlesnake yeah. sound. Then, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm too high. That's the truth. Um but well my takeaways from it were were those big moments, the conversations about uh Okay, here's my little here I want to go a little bit down the list of things, but I would like to hear what you have to say about each one. Okay. Um I'm ready. No, one one moment in no order is Julie uh and these are like the memorable moments from the whole season w- with Julie uh making friends with this homeless woman Darlene mm-hmm. and spending the night with her at her <clears throat> where she she sleeps at the Rotunda, mm-hmm. which is a place down in New York. Um, where all these other people were sleeping outside. Mm -hmm. Um, That really kind of was interesting to me and and very memorable for me. I had never seen anything like that. She could have been, it was, she put herself in jeopardy a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a vulnerable position to be in. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I remember that. Do you remember thinking about anything about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that even then part of me was like, okay, is this for exploitation or, but I felt, I did, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't land on that because I do feel that Julie genuinely cared about people, and she also truly wanted to understand people. And she was, she was hungry to learn from people, and she knew she knew that she came from a very so sheltered I, I life. Didn't, I didn't really think it was disingenuous. I mean, it, it was on a TV show. She knew there were cameras there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they had to get a release signed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there is all that. But I genuinely think she wanted to have a relationship with this person. And she went back to see her again. You know, if it was really just for that one moment, mm-hmm. then maybe she would have not gone back. If you remember, she went back later on in the season to see her again and go see her sing at church. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we don't know what happened to Darlene. Uh, she just disappeared and wasn't, you know, on camera again. Um, another moment for me that was very memorable was the whole situation with Norm and Charles Perez. Um, uh, Charles Charles was the guy that Norm kissed uh, when he saw him at the meeting, in the, or at the, um, the rally mm-hmm. in D.C., mm-hmm. and that's somebody he had been kind of dating, like kind of casually dating. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember that kiss because that was the first time I'd ever seen, I know there was this kiss on Melrose Place that probably was in, 92, 93, around the same time. Mm-hmm. But I'd never seen, like, those were scripted actors. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen two guys kiss on national TV, on something like MTV, mm-hmm. just <clears throat> out of their own passion. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, you know, that's wonderful. Um, do you remember that kind of connection? Thing I there? do, but I think that there seems to be a little bit of that leaking through and bleeding into straight media between that and also truth or dare that it's, there seem to be the gay people in gay New York and, and also uh, the specials they were having on MTV about like sex in the nineties and what it's like working in a club in the nineties. Mm-hmm. And there was like, if you watch MTV, you know, you knew about the limelight because the, uh, and, you saw yeah. Gay, gay yeah. So I felt like around this time, it wasn't just the real world. Like the truth or dare probably came out like a little bit before that. Then uh, no truth or dare came out in 90. Okay. Yeah, so then it wasn't like the first time yeah. that I saw it on my television, or like. But that's a that's a movie. Truth or Dare we had an NC seventeen rating. It did, and you know you everyone, yeah, everyone couldn't go see Truth or Dare. Like you, you could. It wasn't just playing on. Truth or Dare definitely was not playing on TV in nineteen ninety two. Um, you had to go and watch it, or be an adult and be able to rent it or get it. Whereas children, anybody could watch MTV. Yeah, but it, I don't know. And the real world. 
they were showing the real world. Yep. No, I guess I'm just saying the accessibility of it. MTV was accessible to most people in most okay. households at any time of day. A lot of students and young kids were watching MTV when their parents were at work. That's different than a movie. Think back in the 90s. In order to watch a movie and you're a kid, you have to either have HBO on your channel. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to go to the movie theater to mm -hmm. see it. Or your parents have to rent it from the video store and bring the tape home and allow you to put in the VCR. Mm -hmm. It's di way different than what we're going to YouTube today. And, you know, and so, but my point is, not only that, MTV played the real world on things that, the, and the, Kevin talked about this. That was the first time that they I mean, that shit was marathons. on loop, too. They would actually, yeah, it was on loop. It was on loop and loop and loop. And so it just hit in a different way mm -hmm. than, you know, than something like Madonna's Truth or Dare, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I also remember after that season, Charles Perez, okay, Charles, the reason why I'm using his first and last name is because I remember watching this show that at the time these daytime talk shows were the thing. It was Sally Jesse, it was Oprah, it was Donahue. Um, and, and early on, it was Charles Perez. And Charles Perez had this whole daytime talk show. And that, and I realized later on, because they aired the same year, that's the same guy that was kissing Norm and was his boyfriend. But he was like, kind of, Norm tells me, if you watch my interview from yesterday, people, Norm tells me that Charles basically went back into the closet. Because I asked him, what was that moment like? The kissing, like, did you know, like, the, this wasn't just like some, oh, some gays, they show gays on MTV. It was Charles these, this kiss. And look him up. This kiss, and he was he was sexy in that day. Um, he was, I mean, you know, everyone changes. Um, and but this kiss was like a was a was a landmark kiss. It might not have been the the very first ever seen by anybody, but it was definitely a major moment. And Norm was a, the first out gay. Is that who I'm talking about? That wasn't scripted. Is that Charles Perez? That's who you're talking about now. But look look him up in 1992, boo. Look him up in 1992. Oh, trust. I'm getting there. Oh, trust. I'm getting there. Let me look him up in 1992. Ah. Trust me. Charles Perez, 1992. Charles Perez, like every convict on Google comes up. <laughs> what? Get out of here. Hold on. Oh, I typed in the wrong thing. Let me find what he looked like <laughs> in 1992. Went back into the closet. You can't go back into the closet after you cuddle and kiss somebody on television, dummy. On national television. Yeah, how'd that work out for you, sweetie? Yeah, well, if any, if you watch it, and the, he's the one with the baseball cap. He's got these beautiful eyes. You can't really hear. Like this is what he looked like when he was dating Norm. The Norm Charles is Perez show here. It Norm, is. Norm brings the looks, honey. Norm, Norm brings the looks. Norm brings the looks. Right. Oh yeah, I see him. I saw that picture too. Norm brings the looks. Yeah, he was like. He, anyway, they were they they offered him that TV show. They're like, all right, but um, you gotta start talking about girls you like to date because uh, we don't have anybody gay and out on our <laughs> television station. You might do that over another, there on MTV. Another thing that was <laughs> another big moment for me was um, probably, and I told Heather B this. You know, all I'd ever heard about the music industry was you have to have, be signed, you have to have a record deal, and you have to be on a label. She talked about that's that. That's all I knew about the about the industry when I was that age. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we would hear in movies and TV. And I'd never really heard, obviously there were independent artists, but I'd never seen or heard a, an artist who had been signed mm -hmm. talking about, I'm leaving the label and I'm going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was a really big moment, being able to see a Black woman mm -hmm. Say, you know, I'm leaving this label and I'm going to do it myself. You know, she didn't have the most successful music career, but she had some mainstream success afterward. Mm -hmm. I, I had, I, I had all locks down her, her song, <laughs> her single. Um, and so that was a major moment. What did, did Heather B resonate with you as, as somebody in hip hop? You know, when you were getting ready to yeah, I mean, I saw her, I saw her and... vinyl around after for a little bit, and I know she was doing a radio show, and then mm -hmm. she got back on the radio again. So, I mean, I I always saw her as a personality, but she was just like to me, like her. Yeah, I connected with her in the real world, but she was like that friend you had in high school you don't really bump into, but if, you might see on Facebook once in a while or something <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? So, but uh, I but I, I really liked her because I thought that she was the realist there 
and um, she didn't. Uh, right now, they put a black girl on reality TV at this one because she's the loudest and she's gonna fight. And I felt like, which is which is Heather didn't. She really was the fight. peacemaker. I mean, she had she 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 was the peacemaker. She was the peacemaker a lot of times. She did have a she did have this this interesting fight with Eric that was turned very physical. I think it was playing and then it turned what was the physical. Fight? Um, the, um it was it was a little bit of an argument about you know it was, ter- it was like territorial. And then they they were they were um she was sweeping and he was messing with her and she was like leave me alone. I think they were might have had been squirt gunning too. Mm. I can't remember. And so he he kept like you know, um, taunting her. And so then it came to, it came to like kind of a little bit of a push shoving match. And then they were wrestling and they knocked over, they, they slammed into the glass table, which this. broke in their little living room. Um, and then she ended up having him in like a headlock. Of course she did. And she, she basically won. And she was like, do you give up? And he's like, yeah. And his hand, he was like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't fight Heather B dummy. Don't fight Heather B. No, but I really um, like her. I would still like her. I, I think she's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Uh, another moment, another kind of int- moment that I remember, mm-hmm. that I always remember, is how much Kevin always had a coat on. He always had his coat. Because he was like, ready to leave. Leaving the house. <laughs> he was ready to leave, honey. He was He was trying to move out <laughs> from the moment he walked in. He's like... Oh, in case anything pops up, I'm just gonna <laughs> run out the No, but he was he was really over it. He seemed he seemed he seemed like over it more than anybody. But he also like I feel like the whole cast kind of came to the conclusion that that he wasn't really gonna open up to them and therefore because they weren't trying to open up with him, that he kinda didn't try to open up with them. Like I feel like it just could have taken a little bit of effort in one direction or the other, and there all would have been a tighter uh crew of friends, but I don't um, but also, uh, also, I felt like rightfully so, uh, he saw a lot of, a lot of differences in obviously privilege, um, but with how the white yeah, he people was, he was woke in. before woke, before we knew what oh, woke yeah. was, he was like original woke. Um, but when I did ask Heather about like being in the house and like the time in the house, cause that was really interesting to me. It's like, how much time did y'all really actually spend in the house? Because if you watch the original season, there are a lot of moments where they all talk about having another place to live or stay at some point. Oh, or really? Another. And so I, I, yeah, Heather talked about having to pay her rent. Kevin talked about having a, you know another place. Andre had a place in New Jersey with his band. Obviously, Eric had his parents' house. They they we they visited Aaron's parents' oh, house. Oh, his sister most his certainly visited. Around. Yeah, in Jersey. Um, Becky talked about living, having another apartment. And so they all, the only one who seemed to not really have another Julie. apartment was Julie. And, but Norm, and Norm, as I mentioned earlier, was in a loft in Brooklyn before he ever even came to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how he got on the show. But um, apparently, Norm, what, so Norm's answer, Heather said that she, uh, Heather talked about it. Y'all got to watch the interview. Heather talked about how, what her schedule was. Everyone had a different schedule. Norm said that he and Julie were the, mainly the two that were always at the house because they knew, and the producer said, if y'all aren't in this house, we don't have a show. And so... With how, how often Norm were they obligated to with, sleep there or to be there? I don't think... They didn't tell me what the rules were, mm-hmm. and I don't think that they, they kept them in jail. Mm-hmm. I, I asked, how often were y'all there? How often did you want to be there? Mm-hmm. Because some of them had jobs. Some of them had a, had a job. Some of them had to leave. Kevin taught at a school. Like, they had things to do. And MTV did um, not so have a budget. I, was, I wasn't like... Yeah, yeah it's, it's different now where they can sequester you. Mm-hmm. Where you, like, you're in there and you're, you don't leave that house. Mm-hmm. There's a bottle. There's a hot tub and a bottle of booze and a bat. And there's that's a revolving get, bottle of you know. booze. But <laughs> the water yeah. in that hot tub stays the same. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> no filtration. So, uh, the, the, and the other thing that really um, I'm, I'm curious about, okay, so these are the questions that I have, if I could talk to all of the guests. My first question is, what happened to Eric's Missy? That's his girlfriend. Like, obviously they broke up. I know the answer, but I'm curious, like, how did that end? 
did we, you know, are you still in touch with her? My next question, and I did ask um, uh, Norm this, are you still in touch with Charles Perez? Not still in touch, but how did that relationship end? Did it end amicably? Did you all, like the impact of you all being a gay couple kissing on national television, did you all ever talk about that? You know, that's what I wanted to know. And I, I didn't get a chance to ask him that. My next question would be, what about the, where are Smokey and Gouda, the pets? They're probably dead. Probably. When did they die? Probably. <laughs> probably. There surely are. When did they die? Did they get rid of the dog and cat? Like, did they Was leave the them cat in the norms apartment? Too? Did they take them back home? Was the cat in arms too? No, the cat was Heather's. Smokey, the cat was Heather's. And the dog, Gouda, was Norm's. And the, their, business, their art business was named after Gouda, their art, art studio. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other question uh, I would ask uh, it is to... Um, to oh, I have the questions list right here. Don't make me pull it out. <laughs> Because I will, because I am. Do you have any questions that you would ask that, that you wonder about, like, all these years later? Before we move on to the new series. Maybe not. Okay. Well, my next question I was going to ask was, um, Becky was sleeping with one of the directors of the show who got fired. His name was Bill. And so my my question probably for Becky would be like, how did that end? Because Bill well, was about on that. the show and still around. And he he di he actually di um, directed Andre's band's music video after he got fired. And so... Blind Melon. I'm cur I was just... Cu yeah. It wasn't Blind Melon. No, I know. But, but it looked like Blind Melon. <laughs> well, Andre's still alive. Shannon, whatever. Shannon, um, the lead... Yeah, he's dead. Um... <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> and those are those are those are the questions that I would ask. So you don't have any questions for them. But here we are. Now we're gonna talk about the the new season homecoming, real real world homecoming New York. And the fact that they have the name New York makes me think that they're gonna do a Los Angeles and a San Francisco and you know, eventually it's we're not gonna get I low key help not. <laughs> Yeah. I actually would like to see the first three seasons. I wouldn't mind. I could do without the um, Los Angeles. What do you think Puck looks but like? I really think... <laughs> I mean, what do I think Puck looked like back then? He actually was kind of hot. Let's find him out. Oh, there was a minute. Even when he did Hawaii road, oh, Real World versus Road war Rules. Show me a picture of Puck from the real world. I mean, he doesn't look like someone that would age that well. No. Puck, Real World 2021. <laughs> oh, he's in prison. For he real? actually, I mean, he's giving me jail time, but. Oh, wow. He, he, Is I he mean, in prison but, right now, I wonder? Ooh, some of these. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, this one, this one, not so much. This one, not so much. This one? Oh, look. no. 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 No, that carry-on luggage under this the This ain't eyes. bad, though. Is this 2021? I typed in this is this. That one is not bad. He's not looking too shabby. Well, some of us aim higher than others. Okay, here we go. Yeah. All right, so Ooh. let's go into... Let, hold up. I'm, I'm about to break it down. I'm about to give it to you. Puck news. I'm about to give it to you. I'm about to give it to you right now. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look now? at, look at, yeah. I'm watching. I'm looking. Oh. A not so fun farewell. The 13 real world cast members. <laughs> Hold up. Fuck nude. I'm going to see if we can find Which types of work are. Fuck real world new. Oh, here he is. Oh, that's not him. You see him on the. I, this picture of him with the chain gang. What's the chain gang? You know, when you're in prison, uh, doing work, um, and you connect into the chain. That was not that bad. Where? Whatever. He still shouldn't have taken on a Pedro's Whatever peanut butter. Whatever the point is, he's crotchety. <laughs> yeah, long boogies and the peanut butter nasty. 
Um, well, look, I just want to say the reason why, one of the reasons why I want to have this conversation is because I think it's really, I, 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 it's important to me and I don't know why. If we're going to talk about a show, it is important for me to at least let a lot of my followers, people who weren't around in that time, know that, you know, reality TV these days is looked at as like mindless fodder, just kind of mindless entertainment, people fighting, people getting drunk. But the first, and that might have been what people expected the real, the first real world season one to be, but it really was monumental TV, not in the fact that, not just the fact that this new thing became a phenomenon, but this is the first time I'd ever seen a black man and a white woman screaming at the top of their lungs in real life, in real time about race and racism and privilege, white, white privilege is, you know, essentially what they were talking about. Um, you know, police brutality, him being pulled over by the cops. I'd never seen a black man on national television speaking his mind about that unless it was like on the news or like civil rights, you know, things that they were talking about on the news, but never just like an average person. And so moments like that leading into season two where in Los Angeles, where Tammy ended up uh, having a, an abortion after she decided uh, to, to terminate her pregnancy on national television. They didn't show, they weren't graphic. They didn't show anything. But the fact that that happened, it was the first time that ever has been depicted by a real human, like, by, you know, someone that wasn't an actor. What? And then mm -hmm. also, of course, no, I, I was going to say in season three, um, which is San Francisco, Pedro Zamora and his legacy as an AIDS activist and educator. And not just that, also, especially more recent, not more recently, but over the years going back, seeing Judd and Pam, who were very close friends with Pedro, move down to take care of him. And then after, you know, one of the questions apparently he was asking when he was on his deathbed was, who's going to pick up the torch? For me, who's going to carry my take, tell my story, and keep this going? And Judd uh, ended up doing it and, and speaking, taking over those speaking gigs, and continuing that story on his behalf. And I think that's a really great story of an ally, of someone who's an ally to queer people, and just, they moved to help fulfill that. So that's those are the kind of things that reality TV, like the real world was providing back in the day. Well, back to um, what you said about a black man speaking the truth to a white woman and having a fight with a white woman. It's kind of reflective of when you are a young teenager, teenager or young adult, when you finally, you know, when you finally see something in the media, this, I think this is probably more powerful if you lived in the life before smartphones. But if you saw something in the media that actually <clears throat> symbolized in what was the truth and raw and real, it really had an impact on you because it, as opposed mm -hmm. to every other uh, uh, Cosby show that we would see or like written scripts that we were brought up on, like this was nothing that – this this that's nothing like – our childhood of what we watch on Thursday nights with, you know, Cosby show or family ties or facts alive or like, if you grew up in like the eighties and the nineties, yeah, you know? So when that, when you real, saw something that you're like, I can just pick up here and see anything real in a second. But when I saw like, Oh, the truth, like this person is, is saying like what I've been thinking, you know, or wow, like that's a point of view that I don't get when I watch the Jeffersons or when I watch, uh, whatever the Waltons or whatever you watch in the seventies, eighties, nineties. So, um, so I, I think that, you know, that's that's why it was so impactful. But I also want to say that right now, it appears like anytime I see any type of reality show, like, I mean, there's a thousand of them, like this one called like The Challenge that I was just like watching on a date and there's something, just all uh, like all these competitive reality TV shows. What it really has to do right now when they pick the cast, not for Drag Race, that's a different, that's a different entity, but it's like these, these straight reality TV shows is, um, are you hot? And the girls have to be hot. And the guys have to be hot. And we can sprinkle in like a black guy, a Latin guy, a white guy, black girl, maybe make it two white, maybe make it two black girls. Oh, no, make it an Asian girl, a black girl, uh, a Latin girl, a white girl, you know, so uh, one blonde, always a blonde. But that's another thing. There was no one blonde on the real world. Okay. Now, blondes have been necessity in white television for a long time. They'll, let, let's, take a, let's take a blonde girl. Let's throw a blonde girl in there. 
uh, who has blue eyes, you know, so you see that a lot. And, and but the, but specifically what I, I, it seemed the angle that the real world was trying to get is let's get seven different people that come from seven different places like it really seemed like that was the goal it wasn't about who was hot i mean yeah eric helped and i think once they started to see like oh yeah if we focus on julie and eric we'll probably get some more viewers like i think they started to pick up on that but at least Mm -hmm. and that and that was going to happen quickly regardless but at least from the inception the idea was getting different people that came from different um parts of life that came from, that have different yes, perspectives yeah. to get together and be and live in the same apartment and then watch it all go down and blow up. Well, so they really did have a, a, a formula that they followed for the first episode and through the whole entire first season. And I think that they actually stuck with that formula, at least from what I can tell with the very first episode of homecoming New York, uh, with having the roommates come in one by one almost in the same order that they did on the original season. I don't know if you, if you spooked that. Um, and, you know, starting with Julie in the taxi cab and then going to, you know, getting every, um, they had to skip over Eric. Um, and then the next person in would have been Becky, then Kevin, then Andre. That was the original order. Um, uh, and Heather. And then uh, uh, Julie came in last in the original. Um and so I do think that was really interesting that they kind of kind of stayed to that same order. Mm. Uh, and I really do like how they had a split screen of 1992 and 2001, both on the screen. So let's get into know. it. Let's get into it. Who's been wearing sunblock? We're into it. What did you I say? I said, who's been wearing sunblock? And who hasn't? I don't know. I don't, well... Um, I think that Julie has. I think that Julie's been wearing sunblock. I think that she's been exfoliating, washing her face twice a day, doing a double cleanse at night. Uh I think that... uh, I don't know about Eric and all that. You're saying who looks young and who looks old? I don't want to... I don't want to... You know what? Look, I think it's important that people take care of their skin. I think Heather B looks the best. You can have that. Okay, you can can pretend you're not... not You can pretend you're not shady for me. I get that. But um, <laughs> well, I'm I'm I don't I don't want to I don't want to look. Thirty years later, I wasn't. Hey, that, I'm not. Hey, I wasn't. 10. Hey, I'm saying the same I thing. Was, I'm not. I'm 10. saying the same thing. And so I'm 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 only a few years younger than most mm-hmm. of these people. So I'm trying to keep my mouth shut about it. They look they look fine to me. Yes, they've gained weight. Yes, they've lost hair. Yes, there's no one. No, no one. Look, you ain't seen me come to some for someone's hair. And I'm, but I'm trying to say that I'm just trying to say this. Is, and you know, you might you might take this. Oh, he looks old. But I'm just trying to say that sunblock makes a difference when you get in fifth. When you turn fifty, you can tell who's been wearing sunblock for the past twenty, thirty years, and who hasn't. I can. I, I think it's not even sunblock. I, I don't even think it's that simple. I think it's you can okay. tell who's actually been who's Stressed. actually thought about. I need to take care of my skin, and who hasn't? That you know that that is something. Okay, that, I'm being shady. You know, I'm being shady. Apparent. I'll stop. Yeah, it's you're being shady. Okay, we can <laughs> talk about how they look though. Andre still has long hair. Andre still has long hair, and you I know, love that. I think I think uh, the the people like in terms of like I would instantly recognize. I might not recognize Kevin right away. Although Kevin stayed in the news afterwards, I would definitely recognize Kevin's Heather skin right is away. flawless. I might not recognize. Yeah, I might not. I'm good or bad or, or indifferent. I'm just. I'm not going to comment on how good they look or bad they look. I'm just going to say I would recognize Heather right away. I would. I might not recognize Eric. Did, right away. I will say that I didn't remember Heather's freckles being so prominent when I first went in season one. But her freckles are like. I think I, I did, but you know, we're also now in HD, and there was nothing HD about that okay. back, back in the day. It was VHSD. Um, I, pro- I probably would not recognize, I might, actually, no, I don't think I would recognize Becky. I would, rec- I would recognize Julie. I think I would recognize Julie if I heard her talk. Julie, you know? I would do a triple take. Juke because it, she her, she has a I lot. I would do of, a double or triple take. Okay. Yeah. Um, Andre is giving me. Andre doesn't look. Andre the same. is giving me eighth grade music teacher. 
down, maybe a little yeah. bit of yoga yeah. teacher. I would not recognize him. Would you recognize him? No. If you saw him on the street, Norm, like, whoa, that's Norm. Norm, I probably wouldn't recognize, but from that, from one of those shots, it looks like I, he's got I, a nice I, butt. I might not recognize Norm. So they still had to get a shower shot with him. Um, Heather B, I would recognize. Kevin, I wouldn't. Heather B is the most recognizable. Well, I would then also recognize her because I was still following her. You know what I mean? And I was still right. following her career. Well, that's what I'm saying about Kevin, too. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, who else are we missing? So we met all the house. Oh, Becky. I said, I said Becky. Well, you found her recognizable? I don't probably, I don't know. I don't think I would have recognized her. Moderately. Like if I was working at Dunkin' Donuts sure and she came in to get an egg and cheese and a coffee, I wouldn't think she talked. Twice. No, Julie, if Julie talked. Um, based on... Based on how based on how things are going, and I don't really know, Becky might be. They're 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 setting it up that that if Becky came into the Starbucks that you were that if you were working at one, that Becky might not be the person wearing the mask. That's what they're setting it up to kind of feel like. You know, I don't really know if that's true. I I, I certainly can't say that. But the, the some of the interviews I've seen and some of the things are setting it up to seem like Becky. It's like, you know, this rogue, maybe possible Trump supporter in the house. I don't know, based on this first conversation they, she had with Kevin in the kitchen, but I don't know. <laughs> well, what do you well I can't believe they're only there six days, okay? And, and it looks like everybody cries. I know. Like, how, were they just drinking the whole time? Or was there something in the water? Like, I, I can, I, I can. Well, there was booze there. I can hold back from crying. But. I don't know. I mean, look, you'd say that, but I have been in situations where I come in, I come back to something 10 years later and there's emotion there. They were emotionally connected to that place. Mm -hmm. And then going back to it, it can oh. probably become Yeah, emotional. I was thinking about where I was when I was like 18 and like the house I used to hang out with. And it was like, I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts and Worcester is famous for its triple deckers. That's why the first record label, the first publishing company that I had was called Triple Decker Records. And so, it's, and so there was a triple deck of house and it was like three apartments on top of each other. And um, all mm -hmm. different groups of friends of mine lived in the same house. And it was like, oh, where are you going? Oh, to the apartment. And, and even the fourth floor too, because they did something with the attic. And I spent like a lot of my life there, especially when I was 18. And I was thinking about, shit, if I had to go back there now. With all the same people. I don't see. Here's the no, thing: no, no. if you had to go back there now, with all the same people mm -hmm. and be kind of captive in that half situation, of, half of them are dead. Relive. Half of them died before I even left. Okay, but um, oh, yeah. I'm, well, there was a lot of there was a lot of heroin addiction um, going on there at the time that I, mm -hmm. I wasn't involved in, but there were like some people that were involved with heroin and. Um, uh, but I, but I just want to say, like, I'll, I'll just be honest with this. Can turn into a topic of conversation now or next week. But I'm really uncomfortable with digging into the past. Okay, like I, I, I really don't like it, it, with anything in my life. Like I, I'm just, I don't know what it is. And I, some people love to go back home. Or I can't wait to go back home. Stuff like that. Or oh, let me see the school I went to. I, I don't like to go back at all ever. And I, it's not necessarily because I had. I understand yeah, that. Oh, and so I this was bringing up that. feelings for me. I feel, like I like to, I like to, I don't like like pictures. I don't like people to surprise and be like, look at this picture we found of you. Of da, 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 da. I don't like that. But I do like hearing from my friends, people that I used to be close with, finding out how they're doing. I am interested in their life. You know, what, what did you end up doing after the last time we saw each other years ago? Mm. Or, you know, how are things? You know, like I am interested in that generally. Um, and what, one of the things that's, what's, you know, when I was younger, I remember having, um, you know, experiences of people and then we, we would have the experience and then I, then I would never see them again. Or, you know, we worked together and they said something or maybe they defended me or, or said something really helpful to me or told me something that was useful later on in life. And I never saw them again. And so I am interested in being able to go back and say, you know what, it might not have meant a lot to you. But when you told me this piece of advice, it really helped me. Or like, 
you defended me against some bullies. I had a lot of those situations, mm -hmm. and I just wanted you to know. I know. I know. I never even thanked you. Well, that, for that time when I asked you for but, a piece of you know, bubblicious, and you said you didn't have any, but I know you did. I just wanted you to know that <laughs> stuck with me a long time, bitch. And now I don't trust anybody, and I buy my own gum. Bubble pop, Thank you. Pop, pop. <laughs> um, but you're right. The emotions were already bubbling on this first episode, um, and. We don't, the spoiler alert, the episode is not that long. Uh, but one of the, th blame. there's lots of seeds that were planted. But the biggest cliffhanger of all, which has nothing to do with the actual story of the show or their relationship, is why is Eric not in the house? Well, let me know what you think. I want to know what you think. Tell me what you think. I have a theory. I think it's COVID related. Um, I think at the last minute, they probably had to do um, like tests, you know, at various points throughout the thing. And I'm sure I, I would imagine that right before they met, mm -hmm. there was like, okay, get your test. And maybe they did a rapid test. I don't know. And I think it was COVID related. I could, I could see them saying, you know what, Eric, we know you're here. We flew you here. But your your test didn't come out positive, so you have to just do it from a from a farm. I'm sure if Eric was going to come on the show, if he was able to be on the show, they would have had him first in the apartment, just like they would have tried to work it out, just like that. I just want to say one other thing. I remember what do you mean? if he was there, they would have had him enter. Well, what do you mean? But can, they would have had him enter into the new apartment in 2021 first, just like in 1992. Just yeah, which is why they didn't. It, it, he he didn't he didn't he didn't enter first. And they were asking where he was. Oh, you're right. They would have had him enter first, but he didn't. He didn't. Which is he didn't. He didn't. He, you know what else happened okay, so then, at which, the end of what, season one, 1992? I'm gonna tell you. Remember on the last episode? <laughs> remember the last episode where they like took over and the like and the and, and they busted into the into the control room. room. And I were, were, hey, were you like, oh shit, people like live there. The other people like because you just you I never even thought of. I never thought about it because I was used to it. And then they busted in there. You saw yeah. all the TVs and shit. Looked like NASA. And I was like, oh my god, like other people live there. Like it was a whole other side that I never even considered when watching the show for the first time i mean i guess i don't typically yeah. but well i kind of understood that a little bit when they when they showed becky having this relationship with the director but i didn't realize that the control room was in the apartment and that like you said there was tvs and people all in it it really did i remember i remember being so like wow this is really interesting that they're showing us this but then the other thing that was was even more and i'm kind of an emotional gal it really, they seem to really feel like they were triumphing, mm. the, the roommates, yeah. when they busted in and they're like, yeah, we got in. And I just think that that was a really sweet moment. Yeah, me too. Um, being able to see them so happy about finally getting to see what was behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so do you think that Eric is ever going to get into that, this new apartment? If not, I hope that they can just turn on the TV and he'll be there when they need to bitch him out <laughs> or call about him some shit from 1992 or something. I don't know. I know. I, I mean, I doubt it. I mean, if he's not going to be there now, and it, and especially, I think I think you're right when you say the COVID related thing. They're not. There's not much they can do about it in six days. Six days are only there. Going to be he's there. What's that? Yeah. So, what do you think? What do you think are some unfinished? Business, because I did ask the 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 Heather and Norm about their experience having filmed, um, and they did say that there was some serious unfinished business. And so, what unfinished business do you think? Um, and I want to know from you all in the comments too. But what unfinished business do you think that there is in the house that you would like to see settled? The Q settled. Q Black Mamba Kill Bill. We have unfinished business. <laughs> you damn right we do. Um, I mean, We're not you can't. I mean, this, it's kind. Of, so we, I don't want to go over. I, I really have a hard time uh, understanding. I mean, I think it's unfinished business because they are all together, put in the same place. 
you know, there's some people, this one person in particular, I feel like I have some unfinished business with from about 20 years ago, but I may or may not bring it up with them. However, if I was in the house with them for six yeah. days, I'm I probably about would. As a viewer of the no, show. No, I know, but because first I was going to say On that, the show. why would you have unfinished business? It was 30 years ago, but I can say, look, uh, it's obviously two things. It's Becky and Kevin, it's Julie and Kevin. That would be the unfinished business. I mean, okay. but hello, how, however, there could have been some things that went on behind the scenes that we Andre, never saw. you know, Andre and Kevin also, Andre, Andre didn't like Kevin. I mean, it, Andre came off as not liking Kevin. I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't. Um, and, and Andre says in this episode that there's some, a lot of things that he wanted to say that he feels ready to say that he didn't say back well, then. Well, he had some time to prepare. And so Andre is another one of them. And I think that there's going to be some unfinished business between, uh, between Eric and uh eric and julie you know because there's a um there's a clip and they showed this clip on the show i don't ever remember seeing this but there was a reunion show mm-hmm. in 1993 mm-hmm. a year after i do remember where this. julie and kevin were uh, julie and eric were not happy that the other roommates believed that they that that producers were were, were featuring them heavily and so Which they were. I do think that there's some unfinished business there. I guess we'll have to wait and find yeah, out. Yeah, but it's their fault. Next week's episode is only going to be. It say? wasn't their fault. They didn't edit it. It wasn't their fault. Yeah. Anyway, next week's episode is only going to be 30 minutes because we're only going to have to talk about the new episode. We will find out. Is Eric going to get into the apartment? Does he have COVID? I mean, if he has COVID, he should be at the hospital. Um, what unfinished business do you all think that there should be settled in the house? And what would you like to see happen? And what the hell happened to Gouda and Smokey? They're dead. That's what I want to know. They're dust in a box, honey. <laughs> the ash in an urn, baby. Caswell, do we have a date? I'll see you next week. If you're nice to me. If you edit, if you right, edit this to make me. I'll yeah. see you next week. All right. We're not editing it. You're not? <laughs> No, no, we're not. We're not going to do any major edits. It's a straight through. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll say good night for Caswell. Thanks everybody for watching. Good night, everybody. If you like this, thumbs up on the video, and um, make sure you subscribe to Caswell's channel. You can get his channel right. Caswell TV here. is my YouTube where I do true crime. Yeah. It's going to be written. It's going to be written, baby. It's going to be a button. We're going to put a link on the thing. Don't worry, we high class, we high tech here. Click that link. Okay. Click the link for Caswell. And um, also leave in the comments what you want to see out of this season. Uh, they gave a little bit of a teaser, but we want to know what you think we will get out of this sixth season. And do you all want to see season two, LA, or season three? Are there any real world fans? Are we talking into a, a mic by ourselves? Who knows? We'll see you next week either way. Peace.